Hey guys, what's up? There's a lot of great fantasies out there, but where do you find them? You know, you can find the, ma the major fantasies like Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones or any of the mainstream like Star Wars and stuff like that. We all know about those fantasies, um, but where do you get fantasies beyond that? You know, everyone knows the mainstream fantasies, but where do you find fantasies like if you want more fantasy? And there's a lot of different places you can find fantasies, and there's a lot of different ways to find fantasies. Um, one of the major ways, just recently, I think in the past few years, I have found that Netflix has a tremendous amount of fantasy stories in them. And when you're looking for fantasies, you don't just want to look for medieval fantasies. You want to look at any movie that is a genre with fantasy elements in it. So urban fantasy, Wild West fantasy, technological fantasy, cyberpunk fantasy, science fantasy, you know, all the different fantasies. Um, even there's a lot of animated fantasies that are really, really good. And yes, Netflix doesn't have everything, but they've got a lot of exclusive fantasies and um, generally a lot of fantasies in their sort of like library um, that are really awesome. And some fantasies you can't get anywhere else. It's like Netflix exclusive fantasies. And one of the ones I would recommend is definitely like um, you would want Stranger Things, maybe Cursed, um, Fate the Wings Saga. Of course, they've got like popular ones like Supernatural and Merlin, which is like, you know, Supernatural is like that horror urban fantasy, but like Merlin is the medieval fantasy. Um, the thing about Merlin is that like, it's got a lot of weird, um, it sort of has like a, 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 a sitcom vibe to it, even though it's not like a sitcom, it does have a lot of comedy in it and a lot of like funny stuff as well as some serious stuff. And so they put a lot of different things in Merlin. Uh, the only thing about Merlin, I found that like, after watching the full season of Merlin, you know, the thing about Merlin is that like, Merlin is still not a master magician and Arthur is still not a king. He's still like a prince. <laughs> and so I'm thinking like, when are they, when is Merlin gonna become Merlin? And when is like Arthur gonna become king? You're like, you, know, you can't you can't find that, you know? And that's the thing about Merlin, uh, but that's good. It's a good go-to. It's not something that everyone gets like into right away and has to like watch all of it. But a once in a while episode is always fun. And another one is um, The Witcher, which is another one. Um, yeah, some people say that it's like a, <laughs> it's a ripoff of Elric of Mel Nibone. I kind of like that they've got those Elric elements in The Witcher. I don't think it's a ripoff. I, I do think that they, they got a lot of ideas from, element, uh, from, from, from um, Elric. But the thing is about like, all movies get ideas from previous movies. You know, a lot of modern um, science fantasies got their ideas from Star Star Wars. You know, it's just like a lot of people get their ideas from older, from older sort of like reconfigurations of that of that thing. You know, there's a lot of different um, ideas that came out recently with urban fantasy that they got from um, John Constantine's Hellblazer, which was like one of the first comic book urban fantasies. They're still good today. And there's a lot of, there's a whole library of it. And I've, I think I've read most of it, but it's, it's an amazing, amazing comic book, one of my favorite. Um, so comics is another great way to find fantasy because comics are almost all fantasy. Like there's very few comics that are not fantasy based. And so, you know, a lot of people feel with comic books that it's all superheroes, but it's not. Um, it's mostly superheroes, but there's a whole ton of comic books that's not superhero based. So if you're not into the whole superheroes, um, particularly, maybe you like them, maybe you don't, but you're not just into them, like, like heavily into them. Um, there's a lot of great comic books and sequential art, uh, with, with, um, in other, uh, fan, in other genres of, of, um, comic book, especially uh, fantasy, because what they do with, with comic books is like almost all comic books are fantasy. Not all of them are medieval fantasy, which is like, you know, the sword and sorcery, the, the witches, wizards, and the knights, and the unicorns, and the dragons, and stuff like that. There are some, not that there are any, that, that, there's a lot of really good ones, there really aren't that many, but there's a lot of like futuristic fantasy, a lot of urban fantasy, a lot of like uh, modern day magic use, and that makes it fantasies, a lot of fantasy elements in horror uh, comics and, um, uh, modern drama with fantasy elements in it. There's also like love stories with fantasy elements in it. There's a lot of great love stories with fantasy elements. Like one of them is Twilight. And I understand that Twilight is kind of like controversial. Some people like it, some people don't. I don't mind Twilight. I saw a few episodes of Twilight. I didn't get into it too much, but I still thought it was okay. I, I thought it was pretty good. I didn't think it was bad at all. I did like the whole romance 
in you know the whole love story of Twilight. I thought it was cool that you know uh, the whole uh, romance like she loved she loved him, but he's a werewolf, he's a vampire, whatever it is. Uh, I thought found the romance was like they, they were really into each other, and, I, and that's a really good romance. It goes back to like Romeo and Juliet, where like a good romance is like two people that are like so into each other that nothing else matters, and I just it's irresistible romance at that point, you know. So there's that. There's the comic book now. The thing about comic books is that, yes, it's a lot of it is um, superhero based, but if you just ask your comic book store or comic book people that know comic books, like in the stores, you just to, to recommend some good comics, um, a lot of it is not superhero based. So we're talking about Mobius comics, Alejandro Jodorowsky comics. Um, almost every comic you get will have fantasy in the comic. Like, I, I don't know any, any any comics that are not fantasy based. It's just because there's a lot of fantasy art in it. And especially if you like art with your novels, if you like stories and you like reading, but you also like art, comic books is great. It's got the art and it's got the story. It's got everything in it. It's sort of like, yes, they can't put, you know, it's not gonna be a novel full of content. Um, it's gonna be a comic full of content. It's gonna have less content. And the reason for this is um, it's a lot faster to write you know, 20 pages of a comic book than is to draw it and paint it. And because of all the art that goes into it, it takes a long time to paint it. So they can only do like, you know, a little at a time. They can only like, every, every floppy comic comes out with like 20 pages and that's pretty much it. Uh, Heavy Metal Magazine is another one with a lot of great fantasy in it. Almost every story in Heavy Metal is, magazine is, com is, is like fantasy based, whether that's medieval fantasy or urban fantasy or other genres mixed with fantasy. Um, it's awesome. There's a lot of great stuff. Mostly I would recommend 70s and 80s. Um, check those out. Like I think uh, Heavy Metal Magazine started in 1977. Was great through the 80s, the late 70s, and also like part of the 90s. I think they were good. In the 2000s, they kind of, I don't know, the covers were nice, but they kind of like weren't as good as they were before, which was a, a high pretty much bar that they had. They had a high standard of how good they were. They had art, artists like Mobius and, um, you know, Sir Pieri and uh, Vallejo and shit, they had so many. They had like um, Louis Royal. They've got so many great artists and so many great writers um, in in their comics that uh, it, it was just great because of that. And I can understand why, like, I just think that, like, those artists and writers weren't making com weren't making content for them anymore, or as much content for them anymore, and I think that's the reason that the quality of Heavy Metal Magazine went down a little bit. But then after uh, Grant Morrison took up as um, chief editor in charge or whatever it was, uh, he basically, I, I found the stories to be a lot better, and I found that Heavy Metal Magazine got really good at, you know, it, it regained some, some good quality in the magazine, but it's always it's always like fantasy based, whether that's science fantasy or, or historical fantasy or just modern fantasy, it's always great fantasy. And uh, yes, like, you know, the comic book store does not have all superheroes, there's a lot of them there. If you love superheroes, then comic books is the way to go, because uh, it is known for superheroes, but there's so much stuff there. And if you just look at the stuff, the trade paperbacks that were like, they're not the floppy comics, which I would recommend the trade paperbacks. It's, just, it's more content and it makes more sense to buy them because you, at least you've got some substance there. You've got a decent story that you can read through. And then if you like it, you buy the next one. And most of these stories are all fantasy. And, and the thing about these fantasy stories that you get in trade paperback comic books is that they're completely different stories from each other. Um, the fantasies are very, very original and different from each other, whereas like the superhero stuff is kind of like stuff that's already been done, that they redo it all the time. You know, there's only so much you can do with superheroes. It's just like superhero against villain, uh, villains after the hero, and heroes after the villain, hero wins, villain loses. Every single plot line is exactly like that. But I think that's why people liked Empire Strikes Back so much, because, you know, the heroes lost. They had to come back the next movie and win, but the heroes lost. I mean, no one expected it. And you know, when the hero when, when when the heroes lose and the villains win, that happens sometimes. And it's just not anything that people really gravitate to because people really don't like that. You know, they just don't like it because it's just like they're you know they hate the villains. You know, and a good villain is someone you really hate. And so when the villain wins, you're like, damn, that sucks. Why did I read this? You know, why 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 did they make this movie with the villain winning and stuff like that? So. Um, so obviously the, the good guys win and it's just like the whole happily ever after everybody likes that kind of story You know, um, or the cliffhanger Because the other time is when the villain wins 
it's like a cliffhanger, you know? Like, you know, it's just like up to the point where the villain is kind of winning, but doesn't completely win. And it's a cliffhanger and you're like, man, the villain's gonna win and the hero's gonna lose. And so in the next one, obviously the hero wins. It always happens, but there's other, they have to put other things in the plot lines to make it interesting because you know, the basically 99% of the time the, the, the heroes are going to win and the villains are going to lose at some point, you know, it's just that way. It's just, you don't feel good otherwise from watching a movie that's like, that's not like that. But anyway, um, so there's that, I would say Netflix, cause honestly, like right now it used to be video stores was the place to go to for, for like, for uh, fantasy movies and, and fantasy like content and stuff like that. Video stores had it. There was a fantasy section who was like sci-fi fantasy. And it was like one side was sci-fi, one side was fantasy. You could see how like, why there are like similar genres, but they're completely different. Fantasy is, um, is more of like a um, imaginary genre with a lot more imagination. And sci-fi is uh, more of a futuristic projection of the future or if you have like sci-fi elements like spaceships, aliens, uh, anything in the future, it's all science fiction like elements. Um, and a lot of science fiction, if there's any kind of magic or anything that they do that, that they can't, can't explain, um, a lot of that is fantasy elements. Like even in 2001, A Space Odyssey, there were fantasy elements because like they really couldn't explain uh, the end of the movie where it was like uh, what that, what the, um, the astronaut saw when he, fell into that obelisk or whatever it is, the, all the lights. They didn't really explain what that was. They didn't explain what the obelisk was. It was so, they didn't know if it was technology or what the hell it was. They didn't explain it. It was it was explained as something that people can't comprehend or understand. And so that's why they, they, they put that there. But I don't know, you could say a lot of, you know, a, a lot of it like the, the like sci-fi is also some fantasy based because they don't really explain how it works. So for example, like Blade Runner would have some fantasy elements in it. Uh, because um, of the actual replicants and how they worked and, and whatever. It, it was it was explained as they were technological um, and there weren't any magic elements or anything like that. Uh, so you could say it's more cyberpunk, uh, but at the same time, they really didn't explain scientifically how they worked. Therefore, they left it up to like, you know, as, you know people to, to like figure it out. And, and it's sort of a little bit of fantasy there. Like even in the Terminator, um, they kind of did explain how things worked. Like they were robots and they were this and they were that and there was time travel and all that stuff. And like, so Terminator was a lot more like sci-fi than, than, than fantasy. But a lot of times like with Star Wars, the force, lightsabers, uh, which is a, a sword, is a, is a futuristic sword, like a laser sword, which, you know, it's a sword, therefore it's fantasy element. It's a, uh, it's um, uh, the force, which is also like Jedis and you know, they're basically wizards, right, of, of another, in another galaxy far away. They're, they're wizards, you know? And so, um, and so yeah, so they, they always like mix the two together. Piers Anthony w writes great books that always like mix fantasy and sci-fi together. Uh, and a lot of books like the Pier like uh, um, the Incarnations of Mortality series has a lot of sci-fi and fantasy put together. Like the world that they're in is science fiction as well as fantasy. Or like the, um, the Blue Adept series, also Apprentice Adept series. Uh, also has like two worlds, one is sci-fi, one is fantasy and stuff like that. So there's that. Um, but like in the past, like you'd go to, you'd go to like a, a, um, a, a movie store or like a video store and you would get fantasy there, but video stores are gone. And, and the thing about like finding fantasy online is like what we, where we find fantasy today, because going to a regular store, actually buying the, the Blu-ray, it's like $20, $30 for one movie. And if it's a series, it's like season one could be like $30 or $40 for one season. And, it, you know, it's like ridiculous because it's not, not because like, it, yeah, it's expensive, but at the same time, it's ridiculous, not because it's expensive, but because you're only going to watch it once, you know? So unless you're going to resell it after you watch it, like it's just going to be on your shelf um, for a while. And what I liked about like, like renting them is because you saw it and you brought it back <laughs> and you didn't need, unless it like, and if it was your favorite movie, then you bought it because you know you're gonna watch it again sometimes, right? But if it's just like, you know, if you haven't seen the movie, you might not even like it. And now you're stuck with a with a DVD of, of a movie that you don't even like, that you spent 30 bucks on, and now it's up to you to sell it and that's like, ugh, you know, selling it, even if you find someone to buy it, you still have to ship it to them and it's a bunch of work to, to, to sell it, you know, <laughs> to sell your stuff, so. I don't know, a lot of people just end up keeping it and then it takes up space on their shelf. So anyway, 
but that's the thing about about like it was you could see you could browse to what what was available like a bookshop you can browse but now with the internet you can't really browse the internet because like if you know about the movie or, or whatever like if you know about the movie then you could find it but if you don't know about the movie you'll never find it because you don't you won't know that it's there you know and so that's why netflix is so great because it's a library basically of what's available and they keep shifting it around so there's new stuff constantly and they get rid of the older stuff so you know you got to actually watch it when, when you find something you like on netflix you have to actually watch it because they do get rid of them after a certain point period of time and you want to make sure you watch all of it um, but what's cool about Netflix is constantly new, new material coming out, Netflix exclusives, whatever. And they're big on, they're not, I mean, there's a lot of like regular, like classic fantasy sword and sorcery stuff, but there's, there's a ton of all kinds of action movies or like period movies or like, um, futuristic movies or, you know, modern movies or dramas or romance movies or whatever. That's got a lot of fantasy in it and fantasy elements like magic, witches, warlocks, even like, you know, like horror movies that have a lot of fantasy in it. Like Supernatural has a lot of fantasy in it. The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina is all fantasy. You know, I thought it was going to be more of a horror kind of like series because it says Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. But I also know Sabrina is the teenage witch. So at the same time, they used a few horror elements in it because little monsters and stuff like that. But it wasn't necessarily scary at all. And it wasn't definitely wasn't Chilling Adventures. It was more like fantasy adventures of Sabrina, uh, but they wrote Chilling, which is interesting because there's a lot of stuff on Netflix. And I'll tell you that you don't know it's fantasy until you actually watch it. Like uh, there's, there's a, a series called Tidelands and they have one season of that and you don't know what it is. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't like promote itself as fantasy. It doesn't label itself as fantasy. It's a soapy, uh, slow paced, interesting, you know, but it doesn't say fantasy. But it is, and I knew it was, and I was like, I don't want to. I don't know if I want to watch this because even the like the little clip they show you before you actually watch this, the movie or, or, the, or the series, like you watch the little clip to see if you're gonna like it or not. And I watched the clip, and there was nothing fantasy about it. And I was like, Tidelands. I was like, you know what? I bet you this is fantasy because it's like most things on Netflix are fantasy and have fantasy elements in it. And I watched it, and after the, you didn't notice it right away in the first couple episodes, but then toward like a few episodes in you now you're seeing the fantasy elements come in where they're all like they're not like they're sirens which is like they're not exactly like they're not mermaids or mer mermen or whatever but they're sirens which is um underwater they don't have a tail they have like legs but they live under the water and they their song calls sailors to their doom basically and that's what it's about those people and how they live in a small town there's a lot of like crime happening. There's like, you know, they're, they're all drug dealers or whatever it is. Um, and everyone's in it, you know, everyone's corrupt and everyone's in that thing and whatever in a certain town. But they are basically underwater people who um, came from the sea and they're all sirens and they've got these powers and they can breathe underwater and things like that. That you really, you really, really don't know that for the first couple episodes. It's the same thing with Game of Thrones where like when you first watch it, it, it basically... Um, labels itself as fantasy because Game of Thrones it's a medieval thing and you think oh if it's medieval it's got to be fantasy and not all medieval is fantasy there's a lot of medieval stuff on Netflix interesting enough the, there's a lot of medieval stuff there on Netflix about Vikings and things like that that aren't fantasy and so you get if you like Vikings or like sort of like sword swords and like knights and things like that that kind of period piece uh, without the actual magic and the magic weapons and items and the, and the magic beings and whatever it's interesting because it's like vikings without all the magic it's like you know it's not beowulf you know it's sort of just like historical vikings and viking adventures which is a different thing altogether. and so like the what i like about netflix is that you're able to just like browse you, you can actually like type in i'm looking for fantasy and they will show you the most fantasy stuff but there's a ton of fantasy stuff there that doesn't like basically promote itself as fantasy that is fantasy a lot of it looks like adventure stories or dramas or love stories or whatever but they have heavy fantasy elements in them there's magic there's all kinds of like witchcraft and occultism and um trips to other dimensions and weird beings and magical creatures and things like that um that you'd never really know even like something like the martial arts fantasy like Wu assassins was uh, more of like a karate movie that's also a fantasy movie, you know, sort of like that. Um, and so 
Netflix is definitely the place, the place to go and you probably won't have enough time to watch all of it. And that's what I like about it. There's a lot of content. The trick is finding it. If the trick is finding it and it's really hard to, to, do, to know through the little clip that they show you. It gives you some information about the series but, or the movie, but it's hard to really know. Sometimes you have to watch some of it or some, sometimes you have to like basically, you know, kind of like investigate the movie a little bit more to see is this a fantasy or is this like just a drama or whatever it is. Another great way, another thing about fantasies, it's a great way to find them is in bookshops. Uh, the thing about bookshops is that it used to be more basically medieval fantasy, like old time sword and sorcery fantasy and science fiction. That, that was the, um, the choices you had before in a bookshop. But now in modern day bookshops or even like starting in around the 90s into the early 2000s, a lot of urban fantasies came out. And a lot of uh, writers started writing urban fantasies and they became more prevalent. So a lot of the stuff that you're going to find in bookstores is medieval fantasy, uh, um, is urban fantasy, not just medieval fantasy. And a lot of people do like those urban fantasies. The thing about bookshops is that you'll notice a lot uh, right away, if the author has a lot of books there, it's probably a good author. So authors like Piers Anthony, uh, Michael Moorcock, um, there's a lot of different, different authors. That, that, that do really, really good fantasy, um, also sci-fi, but, but basically good fantasy, you can find a lot of stuff there. Uh, but you have to look for it and you gotta like, you, you know, you gotta kind of look at the genre and see, okay, what kind of fantasy is this in this book? Is it a medieval fantasy? Is it a modern fantasy? You do wanna re maybe uh, read into the book a little bit and, and try to figure out like it, what kind of fantasy it is. But usually if it's like, uh, if it's like a lot of books by one, one, one writer, a lot of times these things are really, really good, I find, personally. Um, but I was more into the whole reading medieval fantasies than the whole urban fantasy, but I do like the urban fantasy movies and, and like uh, series that you kind of get on Netflix and, and places like that. And so, yeah, so that's kind of like a, you know, just a little bit of a heads up as to where to find great fantasy and how to find great fantasy. Like every medium has good fantasy, even music has great fantasy. You know, there's a lot of music bands that just do fantasy content music and stuff like that. So awesome. So let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments. Um, like and subscribe. If you like the video, subscribe, like the video. And um, yeah, share it with your friends. And yeah, I will see you guys later in another video. Take care.